Chapter 17 Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant that dealeth wisely shall have rule over a son that dealeth shamefully, and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. The refining pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. A evil doer gives heed to wicked lips, and a liar giveth ear to mischievous tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor blasphemeth his maker, and he that is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Overbearing speech becometh not a churl, much less do lying lips a prince. A gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever he turns he prospereth. He that covers a transgression seeks love, but he that, but he that harpeth on a matter estrangeth a familiar friend. A rebuke entereth deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred stripes into a fool. A rebellious man seeks only evil, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is as when one lets out water, therefore leave off contention before the quarrel break out. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the righteous, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to buy wisdom, seeing he has no understanding? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding is he that striketh hands, and becomes surety in the presence of his neighbor. He loves transgression and loves strife, and he that exalts his gates seeks destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good, and he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into evil. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and a father of a churl hath no joy. A merry heart is a good medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom, to pervert the ways of justice. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is vexation to his father, and bitterness to her that bore him. To punish also the righteous is not good, nor to strike the noble for their uprightness. He that spares his words hath knowledge, and he that husbandeth his spirit is a man of discernment. Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise, and he that shuts his lips is esteemed as a man of understanding. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. We're continuing today in these Proverbs. Uh, these little teachings, these old sayings, these thoughts of meditation, any way you want to look at it, a little something we can uh, learn by and in different ways. We're going to pick them up here in verse 1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of feasting with strife. Better is a dry morsel, that which has no no moistness to it, and that's going to relay that uh, enjoyment or the flavor or that. And this quietness is, and quietness therewith, or peace, then this house that's full of feasting with strife, then the one that has all kinds of stuff, but there's always trouble. And that's going to be the truth, my friend. It's better to live a peaceful life and not have a whole lot than to have everything and nothing but a bunch of trouble uh, that usually comes with it. Two, a servant that deals wisely shall have rule over a son that deals shamefully and shall have part of an inheritance among the brethren. A servant, and in those days, uh, and some still today have those they would call a servant, I that 
you know, but the, it, nonetheless, a servant that deals wisely, one who's smart, one that's wise, that knows what he's doing, and that's one who just knows the matter altogether of the whole house. He's going to be better off, this one who uh, takes instructions, than the son, even the, the, the own son of the master, we should say, this one, if he deals shamefully, then, you know, the servant's going to be better liked. He's going to be taken rule. He's going to be said, watch over him, take charge of him. You're going to look out for him. And he'll even be, have a part in the inheritance or that which they receive altogether. Um, and, you know, the uh, servant, he's he's just kind of going to be like the this one who buddies along with or becomes the companion to this one who's always trying to get into trouble three the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold but the lord tries the hearts the refining pot is for silver and that to, to refine and that's the place where it's melted down it's put in and it's heated up to clean it of the dross to clean it of that which is inside of it the filth and it's pretty well we can uh, associate that with our understanding because that's that's what it's for. And the, the silver is always that which is going to get the good out of it. Even though they're in the refining pond and the furnace for the gold, that's where the hot heat is, that's where the great heat is, and we'll find out it's even the fires uh, for the gold because it's being purified as well. It has to be purified as well. And all those things belong to the God. Uh, the silver we can use and we can think about that as just that of lesser value or we can look upon that like the flesh and this gold uh, could, is the spirit but the Lord tries the hearts uh, Hashem that's the name uh, the presence that comes from the law he tries the hearts and, it, and it's going to be to see uh, what becomes of it because they we're trying to get the cream, so to speak, or the gold from it. For a evil doer gives heed to wicked lips, and a liar gives ear to mischievous tongue. An evil doer, one that's up to no good, he's going to listen to the wicked lip. He's going to listen to what they do and see what they and chase after that. That's what. That's how it all works. And this liar, he gives ear to this mischievous tongue. And the liar, the one who's going to lie, repeat that which he's heard. And because he listened to the mischievous tongue, this one who is the troublemaker. We can, we can look at it just like that. They're troublemakers. Uh, it's all for a reason. Five, whoso mocketh the poor blasphemy is the maker. He that is glad of calamity shall not be unpunished. Whoso mocketh the poor blasphemy is maker. And we can. This is to make fun of, to make fun of, to uh, sport uh, from their poverty, whether it be of wealth or of understanding. This one blasphemies his maker. He makes fun of his maker. Uh, we wouldn't want the Lord to do that with us, would we? Six children's children are the crown of old men. The glory of the children are their fathers. Children's children, and that's because that's what they have to look forward to, uh, these old men, uh, as the grandchildren, to see, to see that they're being multiplied. And the glory of children is their fathers. Because we'll find out they're going to most likely reflect um, every now and then the Lord... Uh, gives somebody the strength to uh, maybe not have the bad reflections um, but it is something they will fight and try to overcome all their life seven overbearing speech becomes not a churl much less do lying lips a prince overbearing speech uh, the King James version says here says excellent speech um, the Excess speech, we should say, maybe excessive speech, uh, or excessive, um, the word is safa, uh, 
and that's basically what it is excessive lip excessive speech excessive we can even say a whole lot of talking uh what we should say is beautiful words don't become a fool and or or good words don't become foolish much less do lying lips a prince uh it doesn't work that way we'll find out the lying lips aren't a prince neither are good words eight a gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it whithersoever he turns he prospers a gift is a precious stone in the in the perceptions of the one that has it, he this what he's received, and wherever so he turns, he prospers because that gift is that which causes him to prosper. It's it's going to be the law. It's always going to be the law. That's the only thing that can that does those things. Nine. He that covers a transgression seeks love, but he that harpeth on a matter estranges a familiar friend. He that covers a transgression seeks love. One that hides it, the one that forgives it. But this one that goes around telling the matter, telling the matter for sooner or later, he's going to estrange his best friend or cause even his best friend uh, to not like him or the, her. Either way it goes, there's no gender intended here. Ten, a rebuke enters deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred stripes into a fool. A rebuke enters deeper a uh, little bit of reproof some uh, good guidance would be a better way to say it uh, we'll do, go a longer way with somebody's got some knowledge a little understanding somebody's looking to try to get some help then a hundred stripes that's to take something and whip somebody with these stripes across their uh, back and this was a old form of punishment but these hundred that's always going to be a judgment. And 100, uh, you can't give nobody a stripe. There's a law concerning the number of stripes we can give somebody. But this don't usually do no good either uh, because we'll find out they don't care. They don't, they don't try to turn from the way. A lot of times they don't realize that the Lord's got them in a, in a punishment and they have to turn. 11, a rebellious man seeks only evil. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall not be. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. A, re a rebellious man seeks only evil. That's why he rebels. He's got his. He's he's evil. And this rebellion is going to be against the Lord's law and the laws of, of the Lord. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him, and that's what he's going to get. Um. A lot of times that cruel is just, he's a liar. He's a liar. And he leads them off. And this is where they wind up in that trap, in that snare. Twelve. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man. Rather than a fool in his folly. You'd be better off, I guess, if a bear that was robbed of her whelps met you. Um, but, you know, and that's to come up against something that's great and mightier than you. Uh, you'd be better off fighting the bear than to trying to f fight a fool in his folly is the whole hint of it. I don't think we need any explanation with that. 13. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, uh, that would be a mistake. And, when, and especially when we teach our children this. And it's done often and it's kind of a gestural play and it's fun at the time later on it's not going to be no fun it's not going to be a funny thing because evil shall not depart from your house and that's what you're doing you're, got, you're raising trouble for yourself 14 the beginning of strife is as when one lets out water therefore leave off contention before the quarrel break out the beginning of strife and and we know that's once we get somebody and they ain't happy they st starting to get uh, make a little scene, letting off some water. Therefore, leave off the contention. Don't argue back. Let them go. Let them go before the quarrel breaks out. And basically, that's what we start. Because if you want to start some trouble, it's a good time. See, they're already overcome by anger, and they're causing a lot. Why add to it? Fifteen. 
He that justifieth the wicked, and he that contemneth the righteous, even they both are an abomination of the Lord. The one that justifies the wicked, that's the one that condones him. That's the one that condones it. He allows it. Oh, well, let him go. Uh, wrong. And he that contemneth the righteous, well, and then you speak against the righteous man who says the Lord said not to do that. Because this is supposed to be a, uh, a place for the righteous to dwell, not the wicked. Even they both are an abomination to the Lord. And it really doesn't matter uh, what your thoughts are. And, you know, and we get all these little pleading hearts that want to call up in here and start boo-hooing over everybody. Well, the Lord's in control. And you might not like the way the Lord handles it, but we'll find out it's his business anyway. 16. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to buy wisdom, seeing he hath no understanding? Why then is there a price or a reward in the work of a fool to buy wisdom? Let's think about that. Why is, a, why is, the, is the fool and this guy I call an idiot? He's always making the mistakes. This is his reward. It's in his works. And it's for one thing that you get a little understanding. You can quit making those mistakes any time it'll be your choice uh, because you keep you have no understanding see and this this is the, the fool he has no understanding he keeps continuing in his in his stupidity going on keep making the same old mistakes over and over and over and over the Lord trying to teach you hey this is a mistake and you keep making the same old mistakes you must not have any understanding but still why is this price or why have you been rewarded uh, to, in such a way. 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A friend loves at all times. A true friend does. Um, they're hard to find because this is a one. A friend, somebody we've got an agreement with, but it doesn't have to be spoken. The agreement is a very simple thing. Uh, we enjoy usually the company of our friends, and there's always that that uh, agreement in the setting uh, that you know, no matter the trouble, there's always going to be this this friendship existing. A brother is born for adversity. A brother wanted the same understanding. He's kind of born for adversity. He's always going to be there to kind of argue with and contend with and and. It could be for good, and it could be for bad. It doesn't matter. Uh, I always say you can't pick your family. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. And there's a reason for that. There's a purpose for that. The Lord's always got a purpose for everything that he, he has. And one of them is these are the ones you're going to have to learn to live with the most. 18. A man void of understanding is he that strikes hands and becomes surety in the presence of his neighbor. This man that's void of understanding, um, he's gotten, he's just not thinking about what he's doing. He strikes hands. He makes this agreement. He makes a covenant. He becomes surety in the presence of his neighbor. Everybody knows. Everybody, he says he's going to take care of it. See, and that become, could become a problem, uh, especially when uh, it may not be your position. 19. He loves transgression that loves strife. He that exalts his gates seeks destruction. The one that loves transgression loves strife. Uh, troublemakers, you know, any way you want to look at it, nobody likes that guy. He's a troublemaker. He always exalts his judgment. He always exalts his opinion. And he's the one that's looking after destruction. Because he doesn't know any better, he wants every, he wants everybody joining his little misery, uh, going by the understanding that he has. Twenty, he that hath a froward heart finds no good. He that hath a perverse tongue falleth into evil. This one that has a froward heart, he tends to go after the wicked way. He ain't gonna find no good. Why he's got a froward heart? He's going away from, away from knowledge and away from wisdom, away from understanding. The book of Deuteronomy made it clear, my friends. That's the law. 
that is your understanding, that is your knowledge, that's your wisdom. And the one that has this perverse tongue, he falls into evil. Those ones that have the twisting tongue, that have the lying tongue, that says, oh, no, no, that's not the law. They fall into evil. They ain't no good for you there. See, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is turn. 21. He that begets a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and the father of a churl hath no joy. He that begets a fool, the one that gives birth to an idiot, do it to his sorrow. Why? We're going to find out you're the one that gave birth to it. You're the, you're the one that raised up a churl, and there's going to be no joy for you. Uh, the, and, and that's the understanding we get, because why? You allowed it. You, you might have forgot to teach him the law. The Lord said teach him the law. It ain't one of the big ten, but it's still a law nonetheless. 22, a merry heart is a good medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart is a good medicine, and there ain't nothing better in this world than laughing, having fun, enjoying that which the Lord give us, this life, our understanding. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Tears away at the essence of life itself, this broken spirit. Broken spirit simply is to not be whole. To not be whole. And to be whole, one must be at peace with yourself. And that's in accordance with the law, my friend. And this would be to be whole. 23. A wicked man takes a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of justice. A wicked man takes a gift out of the bosom. How about a wicked man? We can look at this wicked man, this evil man, this treacherous man, this man that does the violations of the law. He takes a bribe out of the purse. He takes a bribe out of the midst, out of that, whatever the wickedness is, to pervert the ways of justice, to get his portion from the gain and to pervert justice or to twist it to give it a little bit of a different angle. Um, and this happens a lot. A lot of people say, well, this this don't go on much. Well, it, it goes on a lot more than you think. And actually, it's actually taught as the practice of righteousness. Anytime we pay those that are above us, anytime we give them a reward for what they do, we'll find out they'll do that which is going to get them the most reward from those that reward them. And that's, that's, that's not going to be a proper understanding. Uh, if we take a judge and he gets money from those he convicts, I imagine he would convict more people. And that gives you a little bit of a clearer definition for it. 24. And, and they do in our society. We pay them for the number of their convictions. 24. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding. But the eyes of the fool are in the ends of the earth. Now wisdom is before him that hath understanding. <laughs> it's always there. It ain't going nowhere. It's a good example and it's always right in front of your face. But the eyes of the fool, they're looking off somewhere else. Their imaginations are off somewhere else, usually after the foolish things of life. 25, a foolish son is vexation to his father and bitterness to her that bore him. A foolish son. One that just don't don't get it. One that won't listen. One that wants to run off and do and the ways of wickedness and these things that's not going to bring him good life. He's trouble to his father. He's just vexation. He's worry. And bitterness to her that bore him because she cries. And we get this. This is what goes on. All of us are somebody's children. To punish also the righteous is not good, nor to strike the noble for their uprightness. And to punish the righteous, why would you punish those that are correct? Why would you strike a noble for their correctness? Why would you... Uh, those that are good-hearted, why would you punish somebody when they're doing the right thing? 
But we'll find out. It, it happens often. 27. He that spares his words hath not. And he that husbandeth his spirit is a man of discernment. The one that spares his word has knowledge. He holds them back. Keeps a few of them. And this one that husbands his spirit. They're the one and the same. This husband, he looks out for his spirit. The flesh watches out for the spirit, so to speak, or your understanding, your knowledge, your wisdom, uh, that uh, your your spirit, that which dwells within you, that's what you are. And the spirit looks out for the flesh as well. See, the they are one. And when they look out for each other, we'll find out there's a very, very good relationship that, that can develop. And that's what it's all about, a relationship even with Hashem. 28, even a fool. When he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he that shuts his lip is esteemed as a man of understanding. Even a fool, an idiot, if he'll just sit there and be quiet, he'll be looked at as like a wise person. Nobody will know the difference. Just sit there and be quiet. And the one that shuts his lips, he's esteemed as this man of understanding. And the one that just shuts off about halfway through what he was getting ready to say, He'll be esteemed as a man of understanding because he found it knew better to keep on going. And sometimes this is a little lesson that we all could learn from, my friends. Let's move forward. Proverbs 18. Turn and return. 